Hello, everybody. It's Monday. We're doing a mover mailbag on a Monday. Um, figured why not? I uh, didn't get a chance last week. So uh, I know some of I've gotten some questions like, hey, hey, where have you been? But I'm doing trying to finish up the field training program with the sheriff's office. Um, got a little bit of some other stuff going on, too. So uh, that's why. And I've got three videos in copyright jail right now for the uh, Mover Ruins movie stuff. So uh, with that said, uh, I wanted to take a look at a model I got. And unfortunately, every time I do a model, every time somebody sends, uh, I put the link in the description. You can actually see Max Afterburner's channel when they uh, when he did the build for this, which is a really cool model. But I don't know why. I guess they just get shaken loose. But the model itself um, is awesome. But the, the canopies didn't survive the, the transit and, and one of the gear doors. But I think I can fix that. That's not a big deal. Um, what's cool, though, is the attention to detail. Uh, if you go on his channel, you can see what he, what he did. But it's even got the primer colored rudder, which I think is hilarious and kind of embarrassing a little bit for the Air Force. But the level of detail on this model is really cool. And, you know, it's the right number and everything. And, um, yeah, I just need to glue the, uh, or figure out how to put, I'm gonna have to go back and watch the video, figure out how to put these canopies back on, and then I can put it on a shelf. But really cool, really awesome that he did that. Uh, check it out. I just opened it, like, just before. It even has a fragile little ladder, and it says fragile on it. So, um, I will see about fixing that it's going to go next to my other models out there but he also sent a mug from the max afterburner channel oh people i put my phone on a uh, silent there how you doing and uh look at that max afterburner channel i did a little video for his uh feed for when he did this video so go check it out like I said, the link is in the description, and he wrote a letter. Ah, here it is. Organizational skills. Luna, this is not a treat. I'm for sorry, baby. Um, what we got here? Stickers? Stickers? I guess I need stickers for this. It says, Hi, Mover. Here it is. T-38A Talon 681818 is seen built on my channel to commemorate your 301st Finney flight. I hope it arrived in one piece and not in pieces. It mostly did. I'm just an amateur and not the best model builder in the world. I don't agree with that. You're really good at this. But I hope you accept this in spirit for which it was intended. You've done some done many things. You've inspired numerous others to pursue their ambitions and not to give up and not even necessarily in aviation. I know you receive many things and probably don't have an open space for this, T-38, but I hope you store it in the attic, basement, or garage and look on it again one day in the future. I wish you continued success in all you do. P.S. I've also included a couple of additional gifts, coffee mug and stickers, and sorry about my printer. Max wishes, or best wishes, Tom, Max Afterburner Channel. Awesome, Tom. Really appreciate it. Thanks so much. Um, yeah. So anyway, hi, guys. You thought about streaming this also on Twitch? I guess I could do that. Do you guys want to see it on Twitch? I've got a Twitch channel. I haven't been doing much on Twitch lately, although I just renewed iRacing. So probably going to start doing that. And I got a, what is it, like a butt kicker for doing nerd stuff. So yeah, might start doing some more streaming stuff. I've been playing, when when Doug and I play, it's either that or uh, Grand Theft Auto uh, or 5M as cops. So haven't done a whole lot. So that's that's that from the Max Afterburner channel. We really appreciate it. Uh, it's awesome, and, and I enjoyed it. All right, so this next one comes from uh, Jeanette, and it's got a letter. Actually, it's a card. I was supposed to get to this last time, and I didn't, so I barely made it. Uh, hi, Mover. Hope you and the dogs are doing well. Oh, he's right there. Uh, I did work on the idea of the shirt with Don't Be Your Own Roadblock on it. Originally, I was thinking of a more realistic look. I really like the attitude of this jet on the shirt. It actually reminds me of some of the attitudes of the students I work with every day. They're good kids, even with a lot of attitude. Hope you enjoy the shirt. There's a little something for your puppers as well. It's a little gift certificate for tractor supply. Oh, I need 
Um, by the way, I think it's fun to have virtual ride in the vet and see the sights while you talk about the topics of the day. It's such a cool car. Best wishes, Jeanette. Yeah, I do need to get the vet back on the channel. So that is a, that is another thing. I just haven't been haven't been all that interesting lately. And what I am doing, I can't really film or, or talk about. So this is the shirt she sent. Don't be, don't, don't be your own roadblock. I don't know why it's blurry. By me. And what does it say? Fly through high school. Pretty cool. I like it. I really like it. I think it's a cool shirt. Anyway. Cool. That's it for the uh, physical mail, at least that I know of right now. Uh, so what are you guys up to? Uh, let's see. We got uh, Spartan Gamer. Hey, Mover. Just want to say thank you for all your words of advice. Make them tell you no. Help me immensely. And I just got a Navy ROTC scholarship because of it. Thanks and Godspeed. Well, thank you and good luck. Um, pass it on to the next one. Don't, uh, uh, don't be a douche. It's rule number one, you know. So help, help everybody else. Are you going to do three screen on iRacing? I don't know what that means. I do VR because it's much better. Hey, Max Afterburner. Great relief to see little 68186 made it safely somewhat. It did. It did. It, it, it really did. Uh, and I really thank you. I just need to put the canopies back on and a gear door, and it's good to go. So it's really awesome. Um, yeah. I just do, do any more helicopter pilot interviews. Yes. Got a lot of interviews coming up. Well, not a lot, too. A lot to me. So I've got um, one I'm really excited about. I just talked to him yesterday. He was he's he's flown like everything. He flew uh, Tomcats uh, with shoes and bio. He flew the F5, the A4, the F4, the A7, and the F18. And he was part of the filming of Top Gun, and he's got some footage from that. So I think that's really awesome. Um, I, I can't wait to get him on the channel and share his story. Probably be a recorded interview just because there's so much to it. He's just such an interesting guy. And then uh, another recorded interview. I'm going to take the helicopter and fly down to meet my uh, the, the DPE that did my commercial check ride. This guy has flown everything. I mean, like everything. He's blimp, uh, helicopter, gyrocopter, you name it. You know, Gulf Streams, everything. And he's got that air cam uh, that was in the check ride video and he's got an awesome car collection and he was a Chinook pilot and he flew in Vietnam. Real cool guy. Can't wait to uh, interview him and tell his story as well. So that's something I'm going to try to get scheduled at some point this summer because I was going to take the R44 down there and, uh, you know, go do an in-person interview and, and fly with him. So uh, that's the two interviews that I have right now. Another, there's a couple other guys uh, that I need to follow up with for interviews, but that's, uh, that's what it is. Uh, well, he says, what I do, I really, no, nah, it's not that I can't talk about it. I mean, it's just that, you know, I'm trying to finish up. I, so, you know, as most of you know, I'm, I'm a reserve deputy and, uh, I, I started the field training program a long time ago, didn't finish it. Um, because that's about the time with the PKD stuff happened. And so now that I've got some free time, I decided, yep, I'm going to, you know, put the effort in and finish it. So I'm almost finished with the field training program with the sheriff's office. And that's what I've been doing because, you know, it's eight hours at a time. So uh, it's been a lot of fun, uh, a big challenge, you know, but it kind of puts things into perspective. You kind of see what the rest of the world is, you know, and you kind of realize, you know, you think you might have it bad, but, you know, a lot of people have it a lot worse. So um, it's definitely humbling. And if I can figure out a way to collaborate with the department, then we will, but I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't bet on it or anything like that. So anyway, let's go take a look at some of your emails. This will be a short one. Wombat, I didn't even uh, talk to him today. I showed up. He's probably watching going, where, where are you, Mover? I'm a staple on this channel. Um, yeah. So, all right, here's what we have. Um, this first one is the most recent one. And it comes from Yuri, and it says, Hello, Mover. I meant to write you a long time ago, but only now I'm making this happen. My name is Yuri. I'm from Russia. My father is Vladimir, a Russian cosmonaut that was part of two space flights on American Space Shuttle STS-63 and STS-83. Also, I'm saying this so you can have an understanding on the following text below. 
Now, as you know, training is critical for space flights like that. So when my father agreed to this, our family moved from Russia to the U.S. I was in second grade at the moment. When we arrived, I went to a regular American school and sang the American anthem every morning. Not that I hated it or loved it. It was just part of life. At this moment, I'm trying to say that I feel myself an American as much as a Russian because I lived in the States for half my life and have friends, and my sister is there too. Now, the most interesting part of this letter, letter, ah, letter, red leather, yellow leather. Uh, my father never planned to be a cosmonaut. At first, he was a fighter pilot, and only after that, he was proposed to join the Russian Cosmonaut Training Center. We enjoy talking about aviation. I can feel that he is still more of a fighter pilot than a profession that he sacrificed most of his lifetime. Sorry for my English. It's been a while since I used it. As I was watching your video about the ghost of Kiev, uh, I heard you wanted to know the position of a real Russian pilot. If you need answers, I can try and arrange you that information. I have followed you for some time. I'm pretty sure you know all the answers to the Russian-Ukrainian conflict. I do not. Uh, you're just a really polite and diplomatic with your audience. Not only do I respect that, but I approve it also. It's really hard to get the truth to stay in minds of people that don't want to hear it. The way you present your thoughts to the audience is really hard work. takes a lot of patience. Please feel free to ask questions you're concerned of. I can be a source of information that you can truly believe. Not now, not that I'm talking to you into believing me, but I'm also trying to show you that my political position and amount of information might be useful. I'm one of those people who flew on the NASA T-38s, and I was a pilot. My father took me for a ride. That's pretty cool. At Corpus Christi, visited aircraft carrier where I saw my favorite plane of all times, the F-14, Tomcat. I've also attended a manufacturing company that makes airplanes like Boeing and Sukhoi. I was really lucky and like to be rewarded with a unique father. I know I have so much that I was planning to discuss with you, but I feel like running out of English words. So this first mega equipment, probably enough information. I really appreciate your neutral position regarding politics, your ability to an analyze incoming information. Uh, don't hesitate to ask. Yuri, well, that's pretty cool. Thanks, Yuri. Uh, I have lost the, uh, the chat here. So anyway, that was uh, pretty cool. Did I see uh, Su-25 GoPro footage? I did not. I haven't seen that yet. Uh, not much. I, I did see a bombing of Snake Island footage, which was very interesting. Um, hey, buddy. Hope your family is doing well. Thank you uh, for that. So uh, how would something like the Stigler Brown incident happen nowadays? That would be tough, uh, which is great if you haven't um, read the book or l listen to the audiobook, A Higher Call. I recommend you doing that. How would it happen? I mean, it would have to be some situation, probably something like Ukraine, you know, where you've got a Russian uh, jet partially disabled, maybe from a SAM or something like that, and a Ukrainian fighter takes pity on him. You know, it'd be a bomber, like a Tu-95 or something like that, Tu-160. Uh, but, yeah, it would be interesting. Uh, did you like Flight of the Intruder? Yes, Wombat and I did that. Um, it's stuck, so... The way it usually works with Mover Ruins movies, it, it's 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 almost like a lottery, not a lottery, like roulette. Um, so typically, I do it, I upload it. Sometimes immediately it gets uh, tagged in the copyright system of YouTube. I usually can appeal it with a cop with a fair use claim, and most of the time it's almost immediately released by whatever company. I've had issues with certain companies. Paramount's one of them, actually. Uh, Top Gun was a bad one. And I made a contact at Paramount that I, you know, he's like, hey, just email me directly. And so I did that with this one. It's been about a week. I haven't heard back. So I don't know if he still even works there. Last time I needed that contact was two years ago. That one got flagged. So best case, you know, if nobody does anything, it takes 30 days for it to clear on its own. Otherwise, um, you know, it just depends. They can say no, and then I appeal it and stuff like that. So there'll be two videos for Flight of the Intruder, and then um, A-Team. A-Team was Sony. Sony's usually a lot faster, but Sony also has not uh, responded. So I don't know. It is what it is. Um, hey, Mover, if things got really bad, would trainer jets be armed up to fight? Are they capable of weapons delivery? Which trainers? Like T-38? An AT-38 could, but you'd be less than useless. You'd be completely useless. I mean, no. We wouldn't. If we got to that point, we've been overrun. There's just, there's no real reason to do that. Anyway, back to the emails. Uh... What? I 
I, this is not, this is not, these, these words don't go together. So anyway, um, so this one is, good day, Mr. Mover. Looks like there's some pieces of Top Gun Maverick we haven't seen lately in Hold My Hands music video. Here was a little one near the end of the video, and it's a picture of the, looks like some fighter pilot and something with twin tails, probably the C-57. Um, so yeah, I did see the Hold My Hand video, um, which is probably, of the things I've seen, it's probably the best thing I've seen come out of Top Gun Maverick so far. Believe it or not, I think it's a very emotional song, uh, especially when paired with the footage that's there. Um, personally, the part where the Hornet crashes kind of hits hard, uh, especially when they're talking about, you know, heard from in the heavens and stuff like that. I mean, because I've lost friends. Um, you know, I've lost buddies in training, and it is not easy to see that. It's not easy to see a, a Hornet blow up like that. Now, obviously, I haven't lost any Hornet friends. Uh, directly, although Cabby, I, I did know uh, from pilot training, but um, it, it's it's a tough thing to see. It's a tough visualization. It looks very real, um, but the part before it doesn't look real at all. I mean, the one engine on fire and him spinning out into the cosmos. I also saw something. Um, my lighting makes me look close to death. Hold on. I'm not close to death. We better. Am I am I alive now? Chapachulas. Any scoop on it? No, I don't have any any scoops on any of that stuff. So, yeah. So anyway, that's the. Um, yeah, we did the fly. I did. I did personally. Lunar, are you just sitting here watching? Um, I did the flying tank scene and the helicopter scene where they shut the engine down and the Huey. Because that suddenly makes your engine cold. So, yeah. Uh, do you really think those frank flankers frag themselves in that strike? I mean, I don't know. I, I don't really think anything, you know. I mean, who knows? I think that it looks fairly close. It looks low. It doesn't look like much of a safe escape maneuver was accomplished. And it looks like Dash 2 is very close to a frag. Um, do I really think they did it? I don't know. Whatever. Um, yeah. Anyway, back to, uh, yep, Top Gun soundtrack. People want to, and the footage of the Dark Star, which I think that actually looks cool. The Dark Star doesn't look as bad, uh, in the, in the footage itself. So I'm not too upset with that. Um, it, it might not be as bad as what we thought, uh, originally there. So... This one's from Robert. Hi, boss. I want to move to the USA to become a fighter pilot because I love America so much, and I've got a lot of American friends who love the Air Force. But I'm 17, and I don't think I will win the DV State Lottery for the first time. I want to join the Air Force Academy when I become 18, but I don't think I can win the Green Card Lottery from the first try. Have you got any advice? Uh, you could enlist if you want to do that. I will recommend just becoming trying to become a fighter pilot in your own country. You know, a lot of this has to be service. You know, you have to want to serve your country because... It's not just about flying cool jets. It's about, you know, you're signing a blank check over to Uncle Sam, uh, payable up to your life to support and defend the Constitution of the United States. So I think you need to be on board with that part first. So here's another one. Uh, good day, Mr. Mover. Uh, Lady Gaga. More Lady Gaga. Yeah, more Lady Gaga. Fighter pilot experience. Dear Mover, love the channel, especially enjoy the interviews. Thank you for your service and all you do to inform and inspire. Question, with Top Gun Maverick arriving, all of us 40 and 50-something wannabe fighter jocks are revisiting childhood dreams. What's the closest practical way for an everyday civilian to experience some version of what it's like to fly a high-performance jet? I regret not going to Russia 20 years ago when they were selling Fulcrum and Flanker joyrides. Uh, spendy, but worth it. Obviously, forget that now. The whole space tourism thing is a yawn versus a fighter pilot. I'm not rich. What do you think? Ac air Acrobatic, aerobatic planes. L39. Um, is anybody selling Grip and F ride alongs? That would be awesome. I'm sure I could give it up, save my money, learn to fly a Cessna. Personally, I would save your money and learn to fly a Cessna and then go get your aerobatic training, you know, fly like a Pitts or something, and then build up from there. Uh, I don't think you're going to get a whole lot from like an L39 ride, but you could. I mean, you can even get a MiG 21 ride you know, in the States, but. 
personally, I would just say go get your license. Okay, this next one's from Ryan. Uh, I've been a subscriber to your channel, huge fan of videos. You provide to us aspiring aviators, much appreciated. I have a few questions I'd like to ask you and hopefully receive some clarifications. A bit about myself. 31 commercial pilot instrument multi-engine land with 3,200, not 3,200, 320 hours of flight time. Clean background, easygoing guy with personality, uh, strong motivation for hard work. Currently, I'm working towards my CFI. I've been an aviation lover since age of seven. Started out a little late in aviation due to distractions in life, offered me in early adulthood, then came marriage and kids. Working in parallel towards my CFI, I'm also in the process of listing in the Air Guard here in my home state of Georgia. Went through MEPS today, and fortunately all went well. I do not hold a bachelor's degree. However, I do intend to enroll in college as soon as I come back from tech school. It might take me a couple years to complete since I've got credits on the side. I have a desire to fly in the Guard. My main concern is my age, especially after I achieve my bachelor's, which will be right above the deadline. Based on your experience and knowledge on this matter, do you believe that by being an enlist in the unit, I will have a stand a chance for an age waiver? Any insight? Keep the video, videos coming, and always, as always, make them tell you no. Well, you answered it yourself. It's an uphill battle. I mean, so you're 31, you finish your bachelor's, let's say three years, you're 34, 35. You'd have to be really competitive, and they'd have to really like you. Not saying it's impossible, but it's most likely with the unit that you enlisted with and they have to, you know, basically say, Hey, look, we want this guy and you know, we will put in the exception to policy for you. Uh, you're probably at the upper limit by the time you finish, do whatever you can take classes in the summer, get everything done as quickly as possible. Uh, and just make sure you do a good job in the unit. Cause that's the other thing, you know, show that you have a work ethic and somebody will take note and hopefully you'll, you'll get that. What does Georgia fly? C one thirties. I don't know. Uh, I'm guessing. Anyway, back to uh, the chat here. All right. Uh, God's to Honest Truth Mover. Really cool show. Kind of off topic, but is 1926 a good time for a 5K run if you're wearing boots, jeans, and t-shirts? Dude, I think that's a good time for any kind of run at any time. Sure. Yeah. Why run when you've got guns? Anyway, Shanghai, what's up, man? He is the executive director for a foundation startup which will breed and train spaniels as bird hunting and therapy dogs and pair up with combat vets. Pretty cool. I like dogs. It's a good thing. Uh, just wondering if Gonky's okay. I haven't heard from him, a while, from him in a while. Thank you. Gonky is married with a kid. That's his problem. That's the only problem Gonky has right now is he's married. And he's not allowed to do anything cool. Although, so speaking of which, we're not doing a watch party. Um, I, I put out that post on the community page and probably got 20-something responses, 23, 24 responses. You know, it's not enough to even fill half. And we needed to put 50 people in there just to make it worthwhile. So I decided not to. I don't have a great track record with public events anyway. You know, anytime I've said I'm going to have a book signing or something, nobody ever shows up, especially local, uh, especially around here, especially and with the cost. I mean, it was like twenty five hundred bucks just to rent the theater for one showing. So decided not to do it. Gonky and I are going to watch an early screening on the 24th. And he will be in town, I'm hoping, unless he's somehow not allowed. And so we'll do a uh, quick review after talking about what we thought and stuff. Not a movie ruins movies, just a, a quick review. And, you know, going back to that topic, I'm excited about it. You know, I know I've pointed out some things that are wrong with it. Even in the most recent thing I saw where, you know, they're sitting in the ready room in full gear listening to the... Odeo radio, which is what they're fighting on, which you're talking about doing 200 push-ups, which is all very cringy. I think it's going to be a great movie, and I'm very excited about it. I, I think it's going to be cool. I think the footage is going to be great. I think the music is going to be great. I think it's going to be a great experience. Um, I will look past the nonsense, and then once it finally comes to DVD or, I guess not DVD, digital or whatever, we'll ruin it in an appropriate fashion. But... I'm just going to enjoy it right now. I mean, I hope everybody does. I think it's going to be very exciting. So, uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> Sean says, I'm calling Bravo Sierra on Gonky showing up. Man, I don't know. I'll be out of 20 bucks if he doesn't. So, um, 
Yeah. Good day, Mover. What are your thoughts about dreaming of becoming a USF Air, Fire, Air Force pilot? Yeah, we talked about it. I just, just did a thing on that. Because you have to become a U.S. City, citizen. I think you should want to serve your own country first. Um, I think it's great, but it's it's more than just flying. It's not a flying club. There's so much BS attached to this job that you have to have a, a higher call to it other than I just want to fly cool jets because either it's going to go away or, you know, something's going to happen and you're going to be like, is what I'm doing worth it? And if the only reason you were ever doing it was just because you wanted to go fly cool jets, well, that gets old about, you know, 6.9 hours into it. After that, it's, it's a job, you know, and it's the greatest job in the world. I love it. Wouldn't trade it for a thing. But I think you have to do it for the right reasons. In fact, you know, T-Bear, who's been on the channel, when I first was getting in, uh, you know, and, and I got the, the selected, you know, I'm like, man, I don't know if I really want to do this. And he said, you need to go sit on your back porch and decide, do I want to put the uniform on every day? Do I want to serve my country? Am I willing to give up everything for my country? And if the answer is yes, then go do it. And if the answer is no, you're doing it for the wrong reasons. Like you can't just, oh, I just want to fly cool jets because that's not a, a good recipe for success. Does donkeys fly? Gonky. Gonky. Uh, new job? Nope. Didn't happen. I uh, jinxed myself, got a raw deal out of that, so not not uh, not a thing. Gonky who? Uh, you're right. He hasn't even posted since his Finny Flight video. Like, his, his Ready Room channel hasn't had a lot. Good point about the BS part, and you need to have a greater why. Yeah, one day uh, I will definitely, um, I'll tell some more stories. Hey, Shanghai, why don't you come down? 24th, man. Come down to Covington. I got an extra ticket for you. Um, we didn't rent the theater, but bought a couple seats. So, Hello, Mover. Hope you're having an awesome day. I was wondering something lately. Is it possible to become a Navy pilot after graduating from West Point? Possible, yes. Likely, I mean, not directly, no. Um, but yeah, I am not in the IRR right now. No, not yet. If we started training them now, could they be flying in six months? Who? Who are we talking about? Uh, let's see. My son graduated from Paris Island, and some inbound Marines not only graduated as a U.S. Marine, but also gained U.S. citizenship. Citizenship. Is that available for those going into the USAF? Yes. But remember, that comes with a, a, a commitment. Like you don't just you couldn't just go to boot camp, get your citizenship and then go apply for OTS, which is what you need to be a pilot. You know, you're going to have to fulfill that commitment first and then you can go on. But, yeah, it's a perfectly valid uh, option. Do I watch UFC? No. Is that Larry David? It is Larry David. Big fan of Curb Your Enthusiasm. I think it's funny. I'm from Spain and want to be a fighter pilot in the, oh no, I'm not going to try that, because it's my country, although USAF is way better. Cool. Uh, let's see, German fighter pilot, World War II, uh, 352 kills, is it record forever? That's a tough one. I mean, if you think about it, it's a different war, and we've talked about that with the ghost stuff. You know, it it's different when you are in an uncontested environment and the only thing you have is it's guns only. Right. So that's a much different threat layout than when you have surface to air missiles, um, you know, either with IADs or man pads, you've got missiles themselves from the other jets and stuff like that. I, I think it's just, it's different. It's going to be tough to ever do that, especially when we don't have that many jets in the air anyway, you know, Uh, get current and fly the V-35. Yes, you can fly down to Slide L. I'll pick you up. Mark Hammond, pick you up. You have to fly down. What's the biggest challenge in running this channel? Oh, boy. Um, I would say the biggest challenge is making the videos. I mean, obviously, you know, it takes a lot of work, you know, and there's not sometimes there's not a lot of pay off for it. I mean, it just depends on, on what's going on. But I think also just uh, the attention, perception, 
whether it's good or bad, you know, on the good side, you know, I'm not really big into people making compliments. I've never, you know, been good at accepting compliments. Uh, and on the bad side, I think people sometimes get the wrong idea and they get a, a, a wrong perception of intent and what's actually happening. So I think that's kind of the biggest challenge is, is because because other channels do certain things, people assume you do too, or because things are set up in a certain way in other places, they assume you do too. So you kind of get lumped in when, you know, that's not really correct or fair. But um, yeah, and I think, you know, professionally that has been a challenge as well because people have made assumptions that are not correct. Uh, my plane is hanging right across from the Victory Jet you were in talks with for fights on. They were pretty affordable for people. Yeah, that's true, too. The S211's up there. Uh, that was a good one. Uh, I know you fly DCS. I have flown MSFS. Uh, I have not flown the F-18 yet. Oop. Consider joining SAG to start networking to do technical advising on TV and film. You have a perfect portfolio. I won't even know how to join SAG. I could act. You guys think I could act? I could be an actor, right? Use your acting, Gary. Do you watch the soccer? I watch football. The the American kind, though. Not the, the kicking the ball around kind. Let's see here. If you could turn back time, would you start a YouTube channel again? That's a tough one. Yes, I would. <clears throat> I would do things differently. You know, I mean, I you go back and look at some of the early stuff, and there's a lot of cringe. Um, But... You know, when I started this channel, I didn't know that it was going to turn into what it's turned into to today. Like, I never expected it to go over, you know, 10,000 subscribers, if that. You know, I was just happy when I had anybody viewing. But um, I don't think I would trade the connections I've made, you know, some of the relationships I've built, the interviews I've done. I mean, look at the cool people we've talked to, you know, Shoes, and, you know, we've got the, the other Tomcat pilot that we're going to talk to, and... um just just some of the, the most interesting people that I've been able and fortunate enough to meet and hear their stories have been awesome. And then also just the people the kids have helped. I mean, look at the make them tell you no stuff. I mean, that that's what made the channel even turned into anything is just because I happened to tell my story. And I'm like, look, dude, I'm just me. I'm not an I'm just an average guy that, that made it happen. And. I've gotten letters and emails. I mean, that's why we do the mover mailbag of success stories and people that have like, I didn't think I could do it, but now I'm in pilot training or now I'm, you know, going off to fly this or whatever. And, and that, that means a lot because, you know, I always think, you know, if, what if, what if that person is the one that saves the platoon of Marines off the side of a hill? You know I mean? What if it just is that one person? And that, that kind of gives me goosebumps, you know, cause it's like, that, that's one way to, to pay it forward and, and make a difference. So, you know, and, and I'm not doing anything for them. I'm just letting them know, hey, it's possible. Just don't give up. So I, I am fortunate in that regard. And I am glad that, you know, I've been able to do that and, and inspired them. We've had a lot of fun, too. I mean, we've done a lot of cool things that I otherwise wouldn't have been able to do. So, yes, I will would still have done it. I mean, obviously, it, some of the professional implications suck. And, you know, I, I try to do my best to mitigate it as much as possible. I hope people who watch, you know, understand the reality and don't, you know, have these assumptions, but you can't, you cannot change what people are going to do or think. You just have to change, you know, you have to control how you react to it. And, um, you know, I've, I've tried to, you know, be as upfront and open and, and, you know, sincere as, as possible. So anyway, uh, that's enough on that. MJ Candy, what do you think of the Insta page? MMM6969. Their page is kind of cool, but are they cool? No idea. I don't know anything about it. What is MMM6? I mean, that's a, that's cool numbers. I like that. No cringe on this side of the channel, dude. You rock. Yeah. You got to go back and watch the earlier ones, man. I used to be, I mean, I used to have the whole upfront intro. I would just waste a lot of time on that. Uh, if memory serves correct, you hint about interviewing for a guard unit and your book's YouTube channel being an issue with the guys there. Could you speak on that? I mean, not, there's really nothing else to say, you know, I've, with the books, I've had people come back and tell me that, you know, they've heard that I wrote a tell all autobiography about, you know, my time in previous squadrons, which was not true. You know, I've had interviews where they're like, you're making money off the backs of your bros, which was absolutely not true because I write fiction. There's no backs of anybody, which just made up stuff. Um, you know, I've, I've, 
I've heard things that, you know, perception is reality is what, what it's always people say. And, you know, it's, I mean, my thing is reality is reality. You know, it's not whether they perceive it. It should be whether it is. And a lot of the stuff is unfounded. So that's all. Uh, let's see. Thank you, Dasher99. Is that an eagle? That's a New Orleans eagle. Cool, man. Uh, other Tomcat pilot, the legend of Lamore Oral. God. <laughs> All Oral with a stolen rental car. Uh, uh, hardest aircraft to handle in your experience? T-38, for sure. Um, Yo, Mover, what's with the Ward Carroll rivalry? There is no ri rivalry with Ward Carroll. I don't know where that comes from. Uh, my Mix Meme 69. Again, I, okay. I really find your channel entertaining. It prompted me to buy and read your Spectre series, which I enjoy. Thanks, Catherine. Tomcats, got to get mover in a cup car and NASCAR. Hell yeah, dude, that'd be awesome. That would be awesome. Bring home the trophy or the stereo. You know, that was one of my things. You know, when I was a kid, I wanted to be a Ghostbuster. I wanted to be a race car driver. I wanted to be a fighter pilot. I'm just going through the, the, the things here. Uh... Have you ever, were you ever in near death experiences? Yes, many. Do I still write? Um, yeah, although I haven't lately. Yeah, back to your bros, that's got to hurt. It does. I mean, it sucks. You know, I mean, what, what do you say to that? You know, what do you say to that? You know, because in this profession, what matters more to me is not what the general public thinks, it's what the peers and professionals think. And when you hear stuff like that, it's like, you know, that sucks. Uh, any kind of, any idea what kind of aircraft you could be flying career-wise next? Uh, if we're being honest, at this point, it's probably unlikely that I fly anything in the military ever again. Um, but, you know, I mean, I probably for the airline can go back and fly the 787 next. Um, you know, might be able to do some contractor stuff, might get to go fly some cool stuff for the channel. Um, yeah, uh, I have actually, if you go look in, I've made several videos about my writing journey to make my books, uh, check it out. Let's see. How did you end up with Viber instead of the Eagle? Don't know what that means. My father worked for 106, 83 Blue Angels, and 22. Have you flown with any of those? Yeah, I flew with VFA 106. Did I ever become a Ghostbuster? No. It's very, it's a very big regret of mine. I used to watch NASCAR every week, but haven't watched more than a handful of races since Dale Jr. retired. Yeah, I'd be fighting with people every week. You know, I'd get wrecked and I'd go be punching people in the face in the pits. How about some love for the heavies? Come out to Dover and check out a C5. That is cool. You know, it's it's not just the heavy. So the first squadron that turned me down was a C5 unit out of Lackland, Kelly. Um, I met them at an air show, got their information, sent an application, and they told me that my scores were too low and it was unlikely that I would do well in pilot training. So they didn't want to interview me. I graduated number one in my class. There's that. Have you met many prior enlisted pilots? Yes. And they're usually pretty cool. Like, they're usually the big picture, um, pretty cool people. I mean, honestly, some of the best people I've flown with have been prior to you. Love the video, your fake flight uh, model, Max Afterburner. Yeah, man, what a great video. I appreciate that so much. Go check it out in the uh, comments. So the, um, if you considered ATAC, uh, or any other contracted, yes, I've applied. It's just, um, you know, it's all about timing. And right now is not a good time, especially with Drock and losing the, the Nellis contract, stuff like that. Said that you wanted to do more than one job. How did you narrow down your choices? How did you choose? I just kind of followed a path. You know, it, it's, it's hard to say that I chose. It's just, you know, I, I was interested in one thing and I started going down that path and it worked out. And then, you know, a door would open and I'd be like, oh, let me try this out. And a lot of it I did simultaneously, like, you know, writing books, being a, a cop, um, you know, because as a kid I wanted to be a cop. And I ended up, you know, now I've been doing that for eight years uh, for free as a volunteer. I don't get paid for it or anything like that. But it's, honestly, it's one of the most rewarding things I do. One of the most dangerous things I do, but one of the most rewarding things I do, too. Um, 
I'm over bust the ghosts of misinformation. <laughs> um, how soon do you think RPAs will overtake manned assets? Not very. I think we're decades from that. So I brought it up with our foundation's visionary founder that I may need a P-51. Yes! I like both of those statements. Do it. Uh, no, I have not sold the Hellcat. It's still there. Um, high mover, are the F-15, F-16, or F-18 fuselages considered to be lifting bodies? Yes. Yes, they are. I think so. Everything takes time. I'm in a similar situation, not the same, but similar in hitting brick walls for the next job that I want. Yeah, and, and you know, and stuff like that, you just have to keep moving forward. You know, it's tough. Um, again, there's a lot going on behind the scenes that I can't talk about right now. That's That sucks, but at the end of the day, I keep moving forward. You know, the truth is the truth. And I say that on the channel. Uh, you have to be open, honest, direct, humble, credible, approachable, all those things. And if you do that, you know, eventually the truth will come out and, you know, the what's right will prevail. It might not be what you want, but, you know, eventually, you know, if you just follow rule number one, don't be a douche, I believe things will just work out. So. Get to work on the next book. We all want to know what's next. Yeah. So I'm actually thinking about taking some time away from the channel a little bit instead of, you know, I kind of did that lately, but that's because of the sheriff stuff. But maybe doing one video a week, or one video every other week, and then using that time to focus on writing the next book uh, and, and doing that instead. ROTC versus Guard Reserve. Uh, I would take any, any way you can to be able to serve. I think the Guard is honestly the best, you know, especially if you can get a good Guard unit that likes you. I mean, it's the best kept secret in the military, but any way you go is is not a bad way. Would you like to fly the F-15? I'd like to fly it now. I make fun of them, but I'd still go. I'd still go fly it. I think it's awesome. You know, any fighter is cool. Anything with a pointy nose. I just love flying. How many hours do you have? Like three thousand. It's not a whole lot, but PFT tips, particularly in getting at three mile. Do y'all? I I don't run. <laughs> what helped me with the mile and a half because I'm Air Force and that's all I do was I would I figured out that I could sprint you know for a certain amount of time so I go do a bunch of sprints and then for the mile and a half I would just sprint a distance like the straightaways because it's a track I'd sprint the straightaways jog the corner sprint the straightaways jog the corners and that I ended up getting like a 95 or 96 or whatever on the test um Go to lobby, buy some canopy glue. Don't use super glue. Yep, definitely not going to do that. Uh, Archie Manning or Drew Brees? Drew Brees for sure, 100%. Uh, yes, I did. Uh, no, they did not. So, yes, I did apply to the F-15s in New Orleans, um, and they wanted me to enlist. They wanted me to be a crew chief, and I said, I can't do that. I'm in full-time at Tulane. I'm on a scholarship. I don't have any time to go take away to go do all that stuff. And that was the only way at the time they were hiring people off the street was if you enlisted first. Um, yeah. Can a deaf person serve the military? That's a good question. I don't think so. Um, enlisted Marine to infantry, now Marine student, naval aviator. Been living by or make them tell you no. Thank you. Just passed my Cessna check ride. Good job, man. That's awesome. What's the most rewarding job post you've had flying or otherwise? Wow. You know, I thought it was cool. I mean, probably the peak of my career. Yeah. There's so many, you know, because when I was a four ship flight lead in the F-16 and I was at the top of my game and they were like, that, you know, the squadron trusted me to go, do, you know, for the ORIs and inspections and stuff for close air support and air to air because they were like, you know, I was a sharp kid. You know, that that was probably uh, my peak because I was tactically proficient, you know, stayed in the books, knew everything that I could. And then I went to the F-18. I think the F-18 was probably the most rewarding because I was home. You know, I mean, I think there's nothing cooler than being in your hometown and doing a lap around the city in a fighter. You know, to me, that was my you know proudest time or being able to go fly somewhere and, and and my dad actually saw me, you know, my dad could see me fly because he was close enough, you know, 
um, for air shows and stuff like that. So I thought that was cool. I got to do that in the Viper too. Um, I think that was the most rewarding in general, but, um, you know, obviously being able to deploy, um, you know, it was a interesting time because I was young, didn't know a whole lot, you know, hadn't done it before, had no experience, but you know, I don't know. I mean, it, it's, it's tough to say because I've had so many good opportunities with good and bad that, you know, it's hard to say, you know, one thing or the other. Good to see you, Mover. Your streams always make my week better. No homo. Looking forward to see the next book already, although your channel would see some crazy gross if you streamed on Twitch. I do have a Twitch channel. 3,000 hours is sadly much more than some unlucky guys. Well, that's 3,000 total time. You know, that includes my airline time as well. I think, um, you know, fighter hours, I'm at probably 1,800 total. Um Maybe might be too, might have hit two thousand. I'd have to go back and look, but it's close. Uh, Lester's great. He's uh, still looking for students. If you guys want to fly in New Orleans, he's looking for somebody. But yeah, I talk about getting ready for OTS run in my interview. Oh yeah, go watch Shanghai's interview. I look like I've been hitting the weights. <laughs> what are y'all talking about, man? You guys are crazy. Will we ever see more life with mover vids? I think the life with mover vids, I, I'm going to try to bring everything back to one channel. I think that's the plan. I might bring everything back to one to this channel and make the other channel like a gaming cha channel. I think that might be the plan. I don't know. For the less regular viewers, please give us a brief summary of your flying career. Um, pilot training advance. IFF at uh, Randolph. F-16 basic course at Luke, Homestead F-16s, New Orleans Navy Reserve uh, F-18s, did a non-flying gig for two years after that, went to the Air Force Reserve, flew uh, T-38As as adversary pilot from 2018 to January, a couple of months ago, and airline pilot, I flew the 737, and I'm on leave of Athens right now. Are you going to do a video on the new T7A? Not unless I fly it. Move to another state? I would, but man, right now, housing prices and stuff, moving costs, eh, it's not a good time to be moving. Which airliner is just a 737? Uh, I've got four years. I, I mean, it's not about planning to fly. It's that I just don't think that'll happen. So, uh, there we go. I'm 22, want to be a Navy pilot, but have no degree. Would I be able to get my degree while in the Navy and then try to become a pilot after that? You could enlist and do that, yes. Um, but you can't, like, it's not like, hey, we're going to hire you to be a pilot. We'll get your, your degree, and then you go. You're going to have to enlist, do whatever your rate is, and then apply. You know, they're two separate processes. Mover, how's it going? Just got a P PC to play DCS. What are your PC specs? Well, I've got a 3090. That's the biggest thing. I've got 128 gigs of RAM, which you guys might know this better than I do. So I don't think it runs as fast when it's 128 gigs because it's all DDR6 or whatever. Would it run faster if I went down to 64? Raymond always says I should. 11900K um, with a Z, what is it, 590 motherboard and uh, SSD drives, and then I use the Reverb G2. If you feel like YouTube is hanging over your head, take a break. It's not worth it. No, I don't feel like it's hanging over my head. It's just, it's just prioritization, you know? Um, to do creative stuff, there's a, there's a whole process, right? And for me, it's tough to do both because you're trying to figure out what to do a video on, what to do this and that and the whatever. So it's it's tough to kind of go back and forth. So if, if I did that, it would just be, hey, look, it just won't be as, as frequent. And I would only do videos when I do cool stuff, right? So less of the breakdowns, more of the, hey, I flew here. Hey, we got an interview here. Or, hey, you know, whatever. Less popular videos because I know, you know, really... 
what has made the channel is mostly Mover Ruins movies and stuff like that, but it would be more of the what started the channel in the first place with me going and actually doing fun stuff. Is there a learning curve? Yes. Is it big? Not really. I mean, I didn't think it was that bad. I thought, you know, you're just a wingman except you're in the same jet. You know, you just, you know, the captain is your flight lead and you're backing him up or her up and you're working together as a team. Mover, you're one of the persons I would thank you for your don't let others tell you no advice. So I continued my flight career after I stopped because of my fears. Good job. Dream fighter to fly the A-10. That's the jet I've, I've chased my whole career. Uh, I was originally hired to go fly A-10s, um, and Hurricane Katrina stopped that. And then I got hired to fly A-10s again at Barksdale, and um, budgets stopped that. And so that would have been cool is to fly the A-10. Because I love CAS. I love close air support. I think that's the most rewarding mission in the Air Force, is being able to support the troops on the ground. And, you know, if you can save that one... You know, 19-year-old with a rifle and a foxhole to me is... is and also, the, the they do the Sandy role, which is combat search and rescue. You know, that whole thing of being able to rescue one of your fellow pilots. I mean, I think that's all very cool. Uh, mover ruins moving. Yeah, no kidding. Mover does not like moving at all. I, I moved so much previously. I Now that I'm here, I'm like, I don't ever want to move again. Does the airline ever call and check in with you since you've been gone? No, I mean, they know how long... I, I mean, it's a set time, so they know... How long I'm gone and when I'm coming back. How feasible or unfeasible is a modern day American volunteer group, aka Flying Tiger in Ukraine? I think that'd be tough to do, but it's it's perfectly feasible. It's just is it realistic? Have you flown both F 16s with GE and Pratt? Yes and yes. There are noticeable differences. The GE is just a much better engine. Um uh, GE Block 30 Big Mouth. Oh gosh, yeah. Awesome. Vintage jets you'd like to fly, P-51, I'd fly an F-86, I'd fly an F-4, I think that all that's all cool. HH-60G Pilot 106 uh, rotor wing, actually, uh, to be honest, you know, while this is all, I'm not getting any jobs right now, let's put it that way, and I may never, so that, it doesn't matter who's hiring right now, they're not going to hire me. Um, Hopefully that'll change soon, but yeah. Remove Ram? Hell no. Okay. There you go. Tell Raymond he can, he's wrong. Would you rather fly a Hornet or a Viper into a combat zone? I'm more comfortable with the Viper, uh, but a Super Hornet is, I mean, everybody I've talked to. DDR6 doesn't need this. Well, which ones do I have? DDR4? Whatever the one, the most current one. I have that one. Scale of 1 to 10, uh, obviously it's 6.9, but above that, and probably a 9. Let's see here. Uh, yes, I have done a combat tour. Hardest check ride? I mean, I, I thought helicopter stuff was, was the most difficult, you know? I mean, I, to me, because it, it was so foreign and it was it's your own money, you know? I mean, if you fail the check ride, there's a lot riding on it. But, yeah. Assume your system is DDR5, which is dual channel. Yeah. Uh, that's that's what it is. Bert. Damn right. I did ride motorcycles. I used to ride a, a Suzuki. I thought about, I've been talking about getting a Ducati, but I'm like, you know, probably better just get a race car. What are the odds of being hired by a guard reserve unit? Does what you study in college make a difference? Uh, yes, it does. I mean, a high GPA and, uh, you know, an engineering degree is going to look better than a, you know, average GPA and, and something else or a, even a high GPA in like general studies. But the biggest thing is it's the whole person concept. So, you know, what are you doing with the rest of your life? Are you flying? Uh, are you a good dude? Boy or girl? Um are your scores good? Does it, you know? Do you want to live in the local area? Are you from the area? That kind of thing. I mean, it's 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 more than just you know one thing. Mover, after you see Top Gun Maverick, can you please note the time of the beach volleyball football scene so the guys can get, all get up and hit the head? Thanks in advance, man. 
wish somebody had told me when the boring parts of Batman were, because that was a like a three and a half hour movie. Uh, what's your proudest video on the channel? That's a good one. Huh. Proudest video. I think some of the interviews. I mean, some of the some of the interviews have been been the best. I mean, there have been some really cool stories, and it's hard to pick just one. But man, will we ever see the future Mrs. Mover on the channel? Probably not. Maybe. Probably not, though. Just in general, because you don't want you don't want the, the privacy stuff. You know, you don't want to you don't want to bring that, or I don't want to bring that in there. See. Sandy won't attack, dude. And then I watch Shanghai's interview, stuff like that. I mean, you, you hear some real heroes. My 39 late. See, everybody knows more about this stuff than I do. Have you thought of going to air shows and trying to interview the pilots to help with more content? Nah, I'm not hungry for content or anything. If I do an interview, it's going to be sitting here in a comfortable environment where I can think. Why don't they add ejection seats to cars? Because you know how messy that would be, people punching out on the highways? That's why they have airbags. I mean, yeah. As long as you're belted in with an airbag and a modern car, odds are pretty good unless you're dealing with like 18-wheelers and stuff. All right, here we go. First time messaging you, but I want to thank you for the content you upload. It scratches so many itches of mine. I'm glad I can scratch you. You still do some DCS? Uh, yeah, but, you know, it wasn't very popular on the channel, so I haven't really posted anything, but, yeah, I have done some stuff. Just fun. Just for the fun of it, tips. Why would JFK need help getting girls? Didn't he have Marilyn Monroe? Um, be yourself. That's it. Be happy with who you are. Be yourself. That's That's the whole thing. My first time in a live with Mover, you got this. What was the radar that you liked most in a fighter that you have flown? Oh, no, we're not talking about that. Uh, I'm not that old. I did not fly in such conflicts. We did close air support. I heard there's chicks playing beach volleyball this time around. Fiddle pack. Do you think you could get a PAO spot in the reserves? I think the. I think it would be a good fit. You know, especially some kind of flying gig, but I don't think that would ever happen. What made you start doing YouTube videos, Gonky? I'm not kidding. So, in 2018, I liked car YouTube channels, and Gonky was doing uh, a YouTube channel on his uh, land business, and... We had talked about it, and I brought it up jokingly, and and I thought he was gonna, you know, laugh me out of, off the out of the room or off the phone, whatever, we were, wherever we were talking. I don't remember. And he's like, "No, dude, you should do it. You should do it to talk about your books, get to know your the, your readers." And I was like, "Really?" And he's like, "Yeah, you should do that." So I was buying a Camaro, and I was like, "Well, I'll do a video of me buying this Camaro, and I'll use it to talk about other stuff, like you know, here's my books, here's." what's going on in my career and all that stuff, you know, to, to keep up with the, the followers and stuff. And it wasn't until I did, you know, one of my readers, you know, cause I had my Facebook page already was like, Hey, why, why don't you talk about how you became a fighter pilot? So I did. And that video, I mean, hundred thousand views or whatever. And I was like, wow, that's really interesting. And so as I was continuing down the road, you know, I started getting more questions and I was like, okay, well, I'll answer this question here and I'll do a video about this and, you know, I'll do once a week and, you know, it, it just kind of kept going. Um, obviously there have been more popular videos than others. Probably one of the most popular, the first most popular one after the, how I became a fighter pilot was just the Top Gun Maverick thing, which triggered everybody because I said CGI interchangeably, which that's how long Top Gun Maverick has been teased to us because, I mean, that was in 20. 18 2019 i don't know a long time ago and um then i hit 100,000 subscribers had the bet with gonky about you know the manchester who's gonna slap me and it's just been interesting you know it's been a, a lot of great opportunities a lot of you know i met 
the folks at Harrison County flew the helicopter with them. That got me into helicopters. And, you know, that's what I did during the pandemic was learn how to fly helicopters, which was awesome. Um, it's just been a fun time. Uh, let's see here. Could you please make an interview with Mike Sutton? Sure. What would it take to get a group of guys together to make a Tomcat airworthy again and make a dare show demo team? Well, you'd have to talk to the FAA. That would be a tough one. Um, how was my first deployment? That's probably worth a whole video series of its own, but I mean, it was, for me, it was tough because I was just a Louisiana boy that had really never been out of the country. So that was a tough transition for me, but I had a lot of good people with me. Um, so it, I mean, it worked out, but I have decent stories from it. How are games like DCS able to make aircraft with fully working weapon systems without being sued by contractors? I don't know if they'd be sued. It's just a matter of whether it's classified. So they just use open source stuff. Uh, fashion tips. I'm the last person to give fashion tips. So no, if you didn't have to board the dogs, would you attend air venture? I don't think it matters about the dogs. I mean, I'd bring them if I had an airplane. I just don't have an airplane. As an airline pilot, have you ever encountered any emergency situation and unruly trouble making passenger? Uh, we've had some like medical emergencies in the back. That's probably the extent, you know, in some not so great places like, you know, in, in coming from South America where you really don't have anywhere you can go. But yeah. Anyway, uh, favorite country I have visited. Hmm. I really love Canada. I like Montreal and Vancouver. But have you thought about doing a tour as Heli Pilot Lee does, maybe in a plane or a racetrack? Yes. I wanted to do the, I actually thought about both of those. One, I was going to do one, I was thinking about buying a Camaro Z011LE and doing a North America World Tour, but couldn't get an allocation for a Camaro because I was going to take the Camaro, trade it in on the Z06, but obviously the market's crazy right now. Um, I even tried to talk to a helicopter manufacturer. I'm like, Hey, why don't you guys let me borrow one for a little while? Uh, you know, we'll do a, we'll do a road show like that. Um, but th they didn't have any helicopters available for such a thing. So yes, I have thought about it. Um, it just ha hasn't happened, but that's a real, real good thing. How about an in-person GT 500 car review? The guy who has a so-so garage. Yeah. I'd have to go over to uh, Atlanta, but anyway, all right. So it's been an hour. That's probably enough for today. Uh, I do enjoy, you know, people say, Oh, you know, you sell I do enjoy, I do enjoy talking to you guys. Um, sorry. Uh, Shanghai, you're always free to email me if you need help with something, but, um, yeah. So sorry. It hasn't been as uh frequent content as usual. Hopefully those videos get out of copyright jail. Uh, I'll be finished with the field training program, hopefully this month. So, uh, if I don't decide to just take a break and write the book, then, you know, I'll go back to, back to normal, but it'll just be as I do interesting stuff. So that's all. But, uh, thanks everybody for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope, uh, you guys, you know, think nice things. That's all. Uh, have a great week and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.